Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Jay Myrax and today I want to talk to you guys about machine workflow. I want to give you some of the techniques and ideas that I use when I'm working with machine. So today I'm primarily talking about machine and standalone. I will talk about some interaction with the DAW, but we're just going to focus on some of the workflows that I use with machine and standalone to get a quick workflow. I have a project open that we're going to work with to show some of the examples of the workflow that I use. So let's just get familiar with the project and then we'll talk about some of the techniques that I use. So that's my project. And what I want to talk to you about is some of the common things that you may have to do when you're working with machine and standalone or as a plugin for that matter, but we're going to talk about standalone. So one of the things that I have to do oftentimes is deal with MIDI notes. I may have to delete notes or I may have to shift notes. I may have to change the quantization on particular notes. Or I may have to do things such as drag and drop MIDI or drag and drop audio. So I want to talk to you about some of the different modes that machine works in and just how I work with machine to give me the optimal workflow. First off, I want to talk to you about this drag and drop concept because I think there are a couple different ideas that get lumped in with drag and drop and if you don't know these things you may miss out on your sound and you may be wondering how come my stuff doesn't sound right so drag and drop is basically the feature that you use from the machine software here where you can hold this icon down and it drags and drops whatever the pattern is for the the selected group at that time so I just dragged and dropped audio to group H. If I go to the sampler, you see an audio track there, which is just a audio loop basically of the audio pattern that I played. So. Okay, so that's the group level sound. So everything you're hearing in that particular loop is bounced out of the group level. So any effects that I have on the group, any compression, you know, maximizer, whatever I may have used. If I use an L2 limiter, something like this, all of that sound would be rendered into the audio that I get when I do drag and drop that in that method, at least because I did drag and drop from what's called the group view. So in the group view, the group is going to act as the bus where all the audio is fed to for the export. So a lot of times I like to work with individual files. It's very rare that I have to work with a two track of say a group or a kit. For me, when I want to get the individual sounds out, I still use drag and drop, but what I'll do is select from the pads, just the sound that I want to export. So. Say I want the clap here. Now normally what I see people do is select that sound and then hit solo and then they'll bounce out the file individually using the export or the drag and drop feature. For me that's not the ideal way to work and I'll tell you why. So when I do drag and drop using the solo it does bounce everything out through the group however what you'll notice about the names, if we go back to the one that I did initially, the name is going to be the name of the group. So the file name that I get is the name of the group. So if I have, say, 16 sounds now that I need to bounce out, all of the 16 sounds that I drag and drop are going to have a similar name, and I don't like that. When I get into my DAW, I really want to be able to work in a way that allows me to access the sounds 
quickly and not have to rename a whole bunch of things. So let's get out a solo here. And then if we go back to this sound here, with this sound that I have selected, if I go into pad mode or the keyboard mode, this is now going to allow me to work just strictly with the selected sound, which is a major advantage. For example, if I need to now do something such as shift the octave of the sounds, I can do that now by holding the shift octave plus button, for example, and that just affects the selected sound, which is a great workflow enhancement for me because now I don't have to select manually all of the sounds for that pattern. All I need to do is just select the sound and put it in the keyboard mode focus. And then that way I can get directly to working on the sound without affecting any of the other sounds in my pattern. So similarly with the drag and drop function now, it's just going to drag and drop the audio through the sound level of whatever sound is in focus and it's going to give me whatever the name of the sound that is in focus is. So now I have the hickory slap clap focused. I'm just going to drag and drop and put this in a new group here. So if we look at my sampling page now, you'll see that the sample name has the hickory slap name attached to it which will make it a ton easier when I get into my DAW and I need to just find that sound. I won't have to look through a whole bunch of sounds that have the same group name with maybe something attached to it like a tempo. Like that, that makes it very difficult for me to find things. But this way I can get the sound that's coming from the sound level. So any effects that are on the sound level get exported onto this audio file but I don't have to rename the file immediately just to be able to find or quickly identify it. So that's a great workflow that I use. I also use the same workflow when I'm working with keyboard instruments because with the keyboard instrument, it's the same thing. I may have multiple keyboard instruments or I may just use one keyboard instrument per group, but using it in pad mode allows me to get to individual sounds a lot quicker and do operations on just the individual sound. Depending on how your project is set up, you may want to use pad mode instead of using the group view. So on the software, I can easily switch back to the group view by just clicking on the icon here. Alternatively, I can hit shift pad mode again to exit on the controller. But this pad mode is a great workflow enhancement. So for example, in my pattern now, if I wanted to say shift the claps forward or backwards using the nudge, then I can do that by just being in pad mode and going shift nudge. And now I've just shifted the claps. So that workflow helps me to just get to individually working with the sound much quicker than I would if I was doing this in the group view because the group view requires me to select all the sounds or all the notes that I want to work with first before I can do an operation such as quantize, clear, octave switch, semitone switch, nudge, and et cetera. So that workflow has enhanced the way I work with machine drastically. I don't have to do a lot of mouse clicking. I don't have to do a lot of uh, event selection from the controller just to get to the sounds. Um, event selection works fine if I need to select an individual like single note or maybe a couple of events in my pattern. But overall, if I want to just affect the entire sound, it's better to go in pad mode because the pad mode or the keyboard view allows me to specifically work on whatever sound is focused. So this is a, just a workflow tip that I wanted to give you guys because it helps 
out a lot in the studio and it, you'll see that it'll save you a lot of time on the back end of things. So hopefully that tip helps you. If you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave me comments, any feedback. Um, also, if you like this video, feel free to share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel because we're going to do more stuff like this. Um, I wanted to talk about machine today, but we also just do music production talk in general. Um, I also want to talk about hardware, software, and everything else that's just related to this world of audio production. So let's continue to get it in. Thank y'all for joining me. Peace and God bless.